how you can finance a car without having a job. Three banks that will lower any car payment right now. Can you trade in your car and it's about to get repossessed? If you're looking to lower your monthly payment on an auto lease, then you most definitely want to do this hack. If you're looking to get approved for an auto loan but you have bad credit, don't worry. I'm going to show you in this video what type of cars you need to be looking at, what process you need to follow to lower that car payment, and what dealerships you need to go to. Let's get right into it. on founder of 850 Club Credit Consultation. Hope everyone's doing well today. Today, we're going to talk about uh, how you can finance a car without having a job, all right? Now, I know that sounds crazy. You're probably like, who in the world would give someone an auto loan without a job? And can I legally even tell you guys this stuff, all right? First off, I can most definitely legally tell you this because it is up to the dealership and the lender to do their due diligence. I'm not going to tell you to lie about necessarily anything or nothing like that. The thing about it is, is that there's ways to do it where um, there's a gray area, okay? And there are also times where it just simply doesn't know um, where it just makes sense, right? So let's go straight into it. Um, I'll tell you guys a quick story, a uh, true story with my clients. Obviously, my stories, they got to be true, right? So I had a client where um, the uh, the husband, you know, he has a job and the wife, she stays at home and they have you know, some, they have a few kids and the, you know, the wife, she says, okay, you know what? I'll, stay, I'll be at home. I'll take care of you know, the home front. And the husband says, okay, you know what? I'll go ahead and do the work part work part I'll bring in the money all that stuff okay and um, and of course you know when you have a situation like that obviously two people need to be able to move around right the problem is is that when we, and we talked about this maybe oh this video must be like so old, like years old and we talked about you don't want to have everything in one person's name in a relationship and this is kind of what was happening um so the husband already had you know a car in his name and they were in the process i believe was uh trying to get ready for the mortgage and they said hey calvin he's a client of mine and they said hey calvin you know what do you think it's best that we go ahead and get the car first and then the house because we're not quite there yet for the house, but we really need the car. Now, honestly, their income is you know, is going to be per. Well, of course, I say their income because they're unified. I don't care if you guys put the money on the table, split it down the middle, or you pay half and half. That's a whole nother argument, almost like this whole Popeyes and Chick Fil A thing. Don't get asked my comment, okay? So. <laughs> But either way, <laughs> Popeye's the way to go. No, but either way. So, I, but I wanted to say um, that if you go with, uh, well, first of all, you have to understand that if you don't have income coming in, that doesn't mean that you can't finance certain things because income that comes in, whether it's yours or your husband's or whatever, that's or your wife's, I mean, your wife's, if you, if or your wife's, right, if her income comes in, and if that's the case, then you can count that income, all right? But there are also situations where a lot of times if your score is high enough, banks won't even ask you if you have income. They won't even ask you if you have proof of income. Now, I know you're probably thinking this, that's BS. No, none of this. Again, I sold cars for six years, sold over 550 cars in less than four years. Not bragging or boasting, but I saw a lot of different situations, okay? And there will be some times where, you know, um, the bank would run, they would see the person's credit report, and then they would instantly approve them without asking any questions. Just so you guys know, the lower the score, Score, the more questions they're going to ask because they can't trust you. But if I could put a number on it, I would say anything that's probably above about 650, 660, they're not going to ask that many questions. And guess what? One of those questions they're not going to ask. And that's going to be POI, proof of income. Okay. That's major for a lot of people because let's say if you're a small business owner and you know your income kind of fluctuates, if your score is over 650, 660, you're more than likely not going to get asked for proof of income. Same thing if you're, you know, if you're not working. Okay. And if you don't have any income coming in. Now you're probably saying, well, Calvin, what sense would that make? And if a person wanted to get into a vehicle, but they don't have income coming in, clearly a person is not going to set themselves up for failure. But the reason why it's an option, because they're going to, uh, granted, they're not just giving out just random, you know, I don't know, people that have very thin, light files that have higher scores that don't really have a lot of proof of paying a lot of people. You know, we're talking about people that have, who had, uh, who have credit cards, cars in the past, and, you know, lines of credit and things of that sort over time, and they just don't necessarily have, you know, income or whatever. You'd be surprised. <laughs> they will approve you. Now, granted, there are some things that kind of go behind the scenes, right? You know, for example, um, you know, if you go into the dealership and say, hey, I need a car and they say well, where do you work i don't work they run your credit they see your scores high enough 
all of a sudden a job is on the application. Now is that fraud? Absolutely, you better believe it. But if you didn't put it there, you're not denying it, and the bank didn't double check, whose fault is it? You know, so, but again, there's a lot of stuff that happens behind the scenes at car dealerships. But again, the bank listed a couple different things. Number one, a person that has good credit more than likely doesn't want to damage their credit so whatever they got to do they're going to pay that okay a lot of people don't have proof of income it's not that they're not working in a sense it's just that, that their paper trail is not the best that's the exact same thing as not having a job or not having income if you can't show proof of it you may as well not have it and so that's where that thin line that gray area lives they figure if you have a decent credit score and you're paying people credit cards and you know uh, every other you know, things that you have that you're making payments on, you don't have new collections and all that type of stuff, then they're going to say, you know, we can trust this person because they give a damn about their credit. That plays a major role when you're looking for an automobile. Now, granted, you can't pull this if you're looking for a house because that's a 30-year commitment, but people need cars to go back and forth and things of that sort, but I know a lot of people who made transitions in the middle. Right. For example, they had a job, they lost it, they needed the, a, a car, and so what do you want? Well, I mean, what are you gonna do? You need the car to get to work. You need to, and you need work to get a car. So again, there are ways to do to to go around it. Be upfront with the salespeople. Be upfront with the finance manager. If you tell them, tell, again, most salespeople are not trained, okay? They're not, I'm telling you. The finance managers, they're gonna be a little bit more trained than you would think, okay? So with that being said, make sure you tell the finance manager, hey, my license is suspended. You know how many deals got killed? Uh, be, well, I hate the word killed. You know how many deals <laughs> didn't go through because people said that they, you know, um, because they, they lied about having their license. Sure enough, the managers, they submitted that deal to banks that guess what they require a valid license had they told me that in advance I would have told them hey Capital One looks for you know a valid driver's license but if your score is over 650 660 they may not ask for that I don't want to put that information out there so but either way that's true so but that's the thing is that if you tell the finance managers up front what your situation is let them do whatever they think is best, okay? I just want to just put that out there because, again, if your score is higher, the higher your score is, the more options. The lower your score, the less options. People used to come into the dealership all the time saying, well, I want a Range Rover. I want this. It's like, fam, let's run your credit, okay? Let's see where you are. <laughs> so let's determine. I remember this one lady, she had history of paying nobody on time, paying absolutely nobody on time. But then she wanted to, I want a Mercedes. I want a Volvo. I'm like, you ain't paid no nobody so again that plays a major role all right so either way if you like this video like it you want to share it share it and as always be sure to subscribe as you have nothing but great content on the way thank you guys so much have three banks that will lower any car payment right now okay so i'm going to show you guys what those banks are and essentially what you have to do in order to qualify but not only do you have to qualify but the vehicle um that you're trying to uh, lower their car payment of of they ha it has to qualify as well okay so let's go and get right into it so bank number one is going to be Caribou, okay? Uh, Caribou has been on the rise. Uh, they actually started out um, essentially starting out giving a car auto loan refinances, okay? Uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be a car. It could be a truck. It could be whatever. Uh, but there's a lot of ways you guys can actually lower your car payment. So it's going to be Caribou. So that's C A. R-I-B-O-U, C-A-R-I-B-O-U. Um, by the way, Instagram, you guys can go to park850.com. YouTube, I actually have it for YouTube. You guys can scan this QR code right here, and I also have the link in the description below if you guys want to learn more about Caribou. Uh, but either way, they have very low interest rates right now. Interest rates are still trending downward. Um, so if you don't like the current interest rates necessarily right now, you most definitely, thanks R Mercedes inside of uh, Instagram for spelling that out for people. But either way, if you're not too big of a fan of the interest rates right now, you can most definitely wait. They're going to continue to get better. Uh, but if you're like, man, I'm tired of this 20% interest rate. I'm tired of this double digit interest rate. This is how you're going to be able to lower that carpet. Okay. That's now that's bank number one. Uh, bank number two is going to be autopay.com. Hope you guys are writing this down. Get a paper and pen, autopay.com, okay? That's A-U-T-O-P-A-Y, autopay.com. I'm going to be doing another video later this week, if not this week, maybe over the weekend or so, um, and something else that autopay does. So if you guys go to the website, you better see that as well too. Uh, but autopay.com, um, now mind you, these are all soft pool, guys. I forgot to mention that. They do not look at your credit to show you the interest rate that they have approved you for. I'll say that again. 
They will not look at your credit, okay, until you want to move forward. They will show you what the monthly payment is. They will show you what the interest rate will be. They will show you what the term is. They're going to show you everything. And then once you say, okay, I'm ready to move forward, then they, then of course, they're going to go ahead and do the hard pull, okay? But you get a chance to see everything without the hard pull, okay? If you guys like this information, make sure you guys go ahead and like it and share it and subscribe if you guys not have done so already and let someone else know about this information as well. Okay, guys, so we got number one. What's number one, guys? Have you been listening? Who's been listening? Go ahead and put number one that's, that was in. That's Caribou, okay? I got the link inside the description below if you guys need to go and uh, get that information. Number two is AutoPay. Number three is ClearLane.com, okay? That's ClearLane.com. Again, another soft pool, okay? That's C L. E-A-R-L-A-N-E, okay? ClearLane.com. Now, ClearLane is actually owned by Ally. If you're looking for a way to improve your credit score, we can take a look at your credit report and create a custom game plan for you so you can improve your credit score and get closer to your credit goals. You can click the link in the description below to learn more. OK, so Ally's been doing auto refinance for quite some time, guys. So go ahead and make sure you guys go ahead and try them out as well, too. They look uh, they will not look at your credit report. Again, you guys got to have that <laughs> shout out to Flippin' Real Estate uh, on Instagram. They are spelling it out for everyone. OK, uh, so for everyone that's just joining us. So that's ClearLane.com owned by Ally Auto Refinancing. So make sure you guys check them out. They will not look at your credit. They will show you your term, your monthly payment, everything. And then if you decide to move forward, then they will look at your credit, okay? All right, number four, number four. Now, wait to number five. Now, number five is my favorite. Number five is my favorite one. Number five will probably be the one that about 50% of you guys get approved for, okay? So stick around for number five, okay? Number four is gonna be lendingclub.com, lendingclub.com, okay? lendingclub.com, all right? So now, lendingclub.com, a lot of people don't know. They just started doing refinancing recently, okay? They did a lot of personal loans, but now they've been diving into um, auto loan refinancing. Auto loan refinancing, a lot of people are looking to lower their car payments, okay? We got these high car payments for various reasons, right? We either thought we could afford a certain amount or we're tired of paying a certain amount. There's nothing wrong with that either, guys. It's not about how much money you make. It's about how much money you keep. It's not about how much money you make. It's about how much money you can keep. Okay, remember that, guys. Remember that. That's LendingClub.com, okay? LendingClub.com. Now, next, what's going on, D? Next, number five. You guys ready? This is my favorite one. The reason why I like this one, the reason why I like number five is because they're the nation's largest, largest subprime credit card issuer in the nation. They love giving people second chances. They love helping people rebuild their credit. They love helping people be one of the first credit cards that most businesses can get when they are building their business credit. You guys know who I'm talking about. The one, the only, Capital One. Auto loan refinancing, CapitalOne.com. Now, you have to go to, now you can actually Google it or you just go to autorefi.capitalone.com. That's autorefi.capitalone.com. What I love about Capital One, pay attention, hang in there with me, guys. And by the way, if you guys got questions, I'm going to get those answered too. Capital One get, not only gives you a credit card, as we know, a lot of us started out with Capital One, all right? Go ahead and put an emoji inside the ca inside the comments if Capital One was one of your first credit cards. A lot of people started with Capital One. Capital One, if you have a relationship with them, if you have a relationship with them, which means you already have a, a, um, a credit card with them, a bank account with them, they just start doing you know, some banking and things of that sort, you know, for checking accounts, savings accounts. But a lot of people got started with a credit card. If you have a credit card with them, chances are you're already in their system. That increases your chances to get approved. That's going to, impre that's going to increase your chances to get approved, guys. Take advantage of this opportunity. Take advantage of this opportunity, guys. And you got to understand that just because you are paying each month for these car notes does not mean you guys cannot save money. Just because you guys got these car notes. See, here's the thing. A lot of us got these car notes. <clears throat> And then we forgot to actually put ourselves in position to start refinancing these auto loans, guys. If you're looking you to it. lower your monthly payment on an auto lease, then you most definitely want to do this hack. Step number one 
it doesn't have to be the end of your lease, but it's gonna work better if you do it at the end of your lease. And that's simply turning a lease into a purchase. Right now, interest rates are like stupid high. So you most definitely don't wanna find yourself overpaying for a car note. One of the YouTube members for this channel was able to drop their monthly payment from $1,600 a month down to $900 a month. How was it able to drop down so low? Well, when you have a lease, a good portion of the value has already been used up during that time of the lease. You see, with a two or three year lease, uh, since a lot of that equity is already gone, you now can turn it into an auto loan and then you can actually turn it into a 48, 60 or 72 month lease. Interest rates being so high, when you take the loan out for 60 to 72 months, even with the current interest rates, now you can take advantage of having a lower monthly payment and still pay $1,600 a month if he wanted to, to pay off the car faster. But the good news is, instead of him being forced to go into buying a car or leasing a car with a higher interest rate and getting a newer car, it's a lot easier to just go ahead and then just turn the car that he currently has into a purchase to save the most amount of money per month. So before you turn in your lease, make sure you go ahead and give the bank a call to see how much money you if can If you're save. looking for a way to improve your credit score, we can take a look at your credit report and create a custom game plan for you so you can improve your credit score and get closer to your credit goals. You can click the link in the description below to learn more. This is Calvin Russell, CEO and founder of 850 Club Credit Consultation. Hope everyone is doing well today. Today, we're going to talk about can you trade in your car and it's about to get repossessed? Uh, you know, I know that, of course, it's a tough conversation to have, uh, but the answer is yes. OK, so let me go ahead and explain how you can do this. OK, so uh, for those who don't know, I've worked at the dealership for uh, I, I sold cars for over six years. And during that time frame, there were most definitely clients that were coming in and they were essentially uh, trying to trade in their vehicle. Anytime you're trying to trade in your vehicle and you still have a balance due, um, and just so you guys know, you can have a balance due whether you are about to have a repossession or you're not about to have a repossession. A balance due is essentially is your current car that you're trading in, is that balance paid off? And if it's not, then you have a balance due, okay? Um, when you have that balance due, they have to call to get what they call a payoff. A payoff essentially is uh, the exact number uh, that includes the daily per diem. Uh, also, it, a per diem is essentially the daily interest, okay? And uh, unless you have 0%, you know, but even then, you know, they're still gonna give you what they call a 10-day payoff. But either way, they're gonna ask for what they call a 10-day payoff. And essentially, that number is already calculated. Uh, that way, a person knows what that amount is. If, if you guys have ever logged into your um, like, you know, auto loan account and you saw you've seen that you have a balance that's there, you'll usually see an asterisk and it says, you know, hey, that this is not the payoff balance uh, because that's just the balance that's like remaining. But at the same time, it's not a per diem. So, for example, unless like in most cases you owe thousands of dollars on a, on a vehicle. Right. Um, and which you usually can't just do, um, you know, you could do a wire or whatever, but they usually send a check. When they send a check to uh, the person who owns the car, the, you know, the auto lender per se, uh, when, they when they send a check to them, the, it's supposed to have that correct amount, okay? I could do so many videos on how the dealership just does certain things, but either way, we're gonna keep this short and simple. When they call to get that payoff amount, right? Um, that's usually, they'll transfer them uh, sometimes uh, they'll use they'll transfer them to the collections department. So it's just like if you called and tried to get a payoff and you you guys know, I don't know if everyone that hasn't been in this situation, but I've most definitely been there in the past in my life. And you're calling, trying to make a payment and you're already behind. Then they send you over to that special collections department and not collections, meaning that it's a collection of your credit report. But that's usually what they call the recovery department or whatever. Anyway, when you're behind, sometimes they don't send you to like the regular representative. Sometimes you get transferred over to, you know, more trained uh, professionals, you know, to try to you know recover that money that's due. And I've even seen situations where a person uh, was about three or four months behind on their auto loan. And when they were three to four months behind on that auto loan, uh, they essentially, you know, got I got transferred over when I made the call to get the payoff. And they said, hey, is a client there right now? It's like, yeah, they're right in front of me. And I said, OK, great. And they said, well, you know, is the vehicle there right now? I'm like, yes, yeah, right outside. OK, great. Thank you so much. We're going to put you on hold. And now all of a sudden you see a tow truck come within about an hour. But by that time, we had already finalized the transaction. Uh, so at that point in time, they did have to pay the tow truck fee. It, it just really depends on how your lender is. But in most cases, 90%, maybe 95% of, yeah, 95 of the time, 
they're going to have a balance too. So let me give you a basic scenario. Let's say a person, usually first off, if you are about to get your car repossessed, that means you're anywhere between two to four payments behind, depending on the auto lender. Some let you go over four months, but most are usually going to start you know, looking for that car around two to four months. When that time frame happens and you're that behind, essentially you're behind two to four months payments. Let's say your you no know, payment is, let's say $400 a month. So let's say you're four months behind. So that's $400 a month times four payments. That means you're behind $1,600. What happens is the only way that that deal is going to, uh, you know, that that deal is going to actually go through is that they add that negative balance to the, uh, to the next vehicle. Essentially, they have to get that vehicle caught up. Yes, that, that vehicle has a payoff amount, but in most cases, they want to get those payments as well, too, because just really depends on the calculations. Most calculations assume that that payment has already been made or the payoff is going to be off. So to keep that from happening, just to play it safe, they usually add that difference. Or an another way to do it is a person can put that money down. Now, here's the catch. That's, and this is another problem that a lot of people don't think about. When you're about to get a car repossessed, your score has obviously you know, been tanked. Uh, because of that, unless you were like in the high sevens, and then you could probably you can afford about three or four you no know, late payments, and might still be in the low sixes, maybe high fives. But in most cases, that's usually not you know the situation for two reasons. Number one, if you're in the sevens, you're probably not going to be you know that late that many times. But things do happen in people's lives. The other scenario is, um, you know, if the score is going to be dropped, now you are more than likely going to put money down anyway. It's amazing how people have. $5,000 down or $3,000 down and they're behind on their car payment. Like where the hell did the money come from? You didn't pay, you know, but people have their, you know, paying bill priorities a little bit different, you know? So, but the short version is you most definitely can trade in a vehicle that you owe a balance on uh, or that you're behind on payments on, or they're looking for it for repossession. Um, obviously just be prepared to pay that, you know, whatever that those months are. So if you are two or three, four or five months behind, whatever that is, uh, be prepared to put that, you know, into the next vehicle. Obviously, they're going to see those numbers. So be upfront to your salesperson about that. Sometimes they can hide that inside the profit, right? They just reduce their number and then, you know, adjust the pricing a little bit. So that means the dealership get pays a little bit less too, because now that, that amount of money now goes to uh, the next, um, of course, the previous lender, okay, as a part of the payoff amount. So again, just be upfront. I think a lot of things that people uh, find themselves in situations, you just got to be upfront. And as long as you're upfront more about certain types of situations, uh, then you'll see that, hey, you most definitely can do this, okay? And just be upfront with them. And of course, not to make this video too long about the dealership itself, but if your license is suspended, tell the salesperson. If you don't have a license, tell the salesperson. If you don't have a job, but you got money, tell the salesperson. There, again, the lender's job is to, I mean, the um, uh, not the lender, I'm thinking on the home buying side, uh, but the finance person, the finance uh, manager is what they call them. Um, you know, the finance person, they're, they know that they have banks for all different types of scenarios. You just got to be upfront, be honest, you know, and that's how you got to do it, especially if you know your situation is not the best. Now, if your situation is the best, you can call the shots, right? Because you know the game. But if you if you need them more than they need you, just be upfront because you're going to waste a lot of time inside the dealership because what's going to happen is they're going to have a bank that's going to approve you, but then it's based on certain terms. But then those terms you lied about and now it's like, hey, show us proof of. And now hours have gone by when you could have just been upfront and honest about it. OK, so, again, you can most definitely trade in a vehicle. Uh, that's about to get repossessed. All right. So if you like this video, like it, you want to share it, share it. And as always, be sure to subscribe as we have nothing but great content on the way. Thank you all so much. Have a great day. We you know what, actually, before I wrap this video up, I did want to say, sometimes people think that a vehicle is about to get repossessed just because of late payments. Sometimes a car, you no, know, just got, you no know, uh, into an accident and the insurance company has uh, they haven't yet you know, decided how they're going to deem certain things. The adjuster could be time frames. You still have to make the payments on that car. It's not up to the insurance company. If the insurance company does make a payment, uh, I'm sorry, if the insurance company does decide to pay off the vehicle, but you got a car payment coming up, what's going to end up happening is they're going to send you a check for the difference. But what happens all the time, people say, oh, I thought the insurance is going to pay that. You got to be on top of this. It's just like a medical bill. You know, you get that bill from the hospital and your insurance hasn't paid it yet. You need to pay that. So, and, and then they'll go ahead and pay you. You know, otherwise it's going to be on your credit 
and you're going to be upset. And that's also another reason, too, because that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be a repossession. That just means that you haven't been on top of that. But usually it doesn't take two, three, four, five months uh, for insurance uh, to go ahead and pay off a total car. So just keep that in mind. See you guys. Looking to get approved for an auto loan, but you have bad credit? Don't worry. I'm going to show you in this video what type of cars you need to be looking at, what process you need to follow to lower that car payment, and what dealerships you need to go to. Let's get right into it. So the first thing you have to understand is that if you have bad credit and you are looking to get approved for an auto loan, there's a few things you have to put in place. Number one, you obviously have to have some income, okay? The lowest income that you're going to need to get approved for a bad credit auto loan is typically going to be about $12 an hour. Now, obviously, a lot more is going to give you a lot more options, but the minimum income is usually going to be $12 an hour. Now, just because the minimum income is $12 an hour, that does not mean that every dealership is going to have the inventory that you are looking for in order to get this type of auto loan, okay? If you're making a little bit more, like $14 an hour, $15 an hour, that's most definitely going to put you in a good spot because you're going to have a lot more options to choose from. Number two, you need to have a payment budget, no matter what that is. And unfortunately, it's going to be up there. So you're going to be somewhere around about $400 a month, $450 a month, 500 a month, somewhere in that range. Now, the newer the car, the lower the miles, the, or the more expensive the car is, obviously, the higher your monthly payment is going to be because you're most definitely going to be in a double-digit interest rate. But don't worry about that. If you stay until the end of the video, I'm going to show you how to lower your car payment within about a eh, 12 to 18-month time frame. Now, your interest rates will be in the double digits, but don't worry too much about that because at some point, you will qualify for a refinance, which I'll walk you through shortly. Number three, now that you know you have the income and the monthly payment budget, let's talk about how to find the right dealership with the right inventory. By the way, if you want to follow along with me, you can click this QR code right here at the top. You can scan it and you can actually fill out this application. What's so great about this company I'm about to show you is that they only work with dealerships that have the inventory and the finance department for people that have bad credit and they're looking for an auto loan. So if you've had a previous bankruptcy, a previous repossession, like I'm talking like a repossession that's about to happen or something that just recently happened, they can help you. So once you either scan the QR code or click the link down in the description below, it's going to take you to this page, all right? And it just simply says, how much do you need? Now, they only give you auto loans up to 45000 okay? That's the most that you can get. And the least that you can get is about $7,000. Now, here's a tip. If you want to qualify for a refinance, it's not just you as a person that has to qualify. The vehicle has to qualify for refinance as well. Now, most refinance companies will not refinance a vehicle that is a certain amount of age old. We'll get to that in a second. Now, most refinance companies are not going to refinance the car if it's too old. So you want to do your best to try to get something that's at least within the last five to six years. Anything older than that, it's not that you can't get a refinance loan, but you may have to get a personal loan. More on that in a second. So once you find the car that's anywhere between $7,000 to $45,000, again, make sure that, that that year is at least within five to six years, then you can go ahead and move forward with the application. Now, it's really simple simple with them. You start the application online and then you're going to visit the dealership. Now, when you fill out the application, they're actually going to send your information to local dealerships that are near you that already have the inventory, already have the finance people, and already have the sales people ready to help you get an auto loan with your bad credit. Step three, you're going to get your car and then it says step four, be awesome. <laughs> Number four, let's talk about the down payment. Guys, you already know you have bad credit. So it only makes sense that you have to put some money down, okay? So the amount of money that you're going to need is really going to depend on a couple different factors. It's really going to depend on how strong your credit profile is. But to keep things really simple, I would say prepare for at least $1,500 to $2,000 down. Now, I know what you're thinking, Calvin. You know what? I, I don't want to put any money down. Here's the thing. You can't say I, I don't want to put any money down and then go to the dealership with horrible credit. OK, you have to compromise on something. Now, I'm not saying that you have to put money down guaranteed, but the other alternatives would be improving your credit score, which you will have to come back to the dealership 
or you can get a co-signer, right? So there are some factors that you could put in place. Or if some people just simply have a low credit score simply because they have a maxed out credit card or multiple maxed out credit cards and you're just simply buying a car in the wrong time. But either way, long story short, be prepared to put some money down. Now that you have the car taken care of, let's talk about how many miles you need to be around and what you need to do to make sure you qualify for the refinance. In short, you really want to keep your mileage based on the average miles per year, which is about 12 to 15,000 miles per year if you can. The only way you're going to go over this is if you drive too far from work or whatever you do for, you know, for driving, or if you end up doing like a side hustle like DoorDash, Uber Eats, or something like that, and adding all these miles to your car. If you do that, you're going to put your car in a diff in a difficult equity position, and then you're going to make it more difficult to actually refinance the car because then you may have to put money out of your pocket to the bank in order to refinance the vehicle. But again, you don't have to worry about this as long as you drive average miles, 12,000 to 15,000 miles per year. Now let's talk about how to refinance. So you have a lot of different options you can start with. One option is a company called Caribou. Now they work with a lot of people that are transitioning from bad credit, still having bad credit, but it's a little bit better and they can try to refinance it. So you need to try to at least get to about 620, 640, 660, or higher, okay? The higher the score, the better it's going to be. And they're going to ask for some basic information, all this good stuff. But the best thing about this is that you can give them all of your information, and it's a soft pull. It will not affect your credit score to apply. Now, if you get denied for this one, don't worry. I got plenty more. Watch this. Next is going to be a company called Upstart. Now, what I love about Upstart is not only do they do auto loan refinancing, but they also do personal loans as well. Why is that important? It's important because if you get denied for the auto loan, for whatever reason, your credit's not the best or the car doesn't qualify, usually it's going to be because the car doesn't qualify, it has too many miles, it's too old, or whatever the case is, don't worry. You can then go to Upstart for a personal loan, and then that personal loan is more than likely going to have better terms and rates than your current auto loan. Because remember, we got that when we had bad, horrible credit, right? Now we take the personal loan, we pay off the auto loan, and now we have a much lower payment. Now the next option is going to be one of my favorites, and this is Capital One Auto Loan Refinancing. Again, you can see if you pre-qualify, it will not affect your credit score, okay? And they can help you either refinance the car to save money, or they can help you pay off your car faster, or they can help you just lower your interest rate and you can move around the terms if you want to. And then it's also really simple to apply. You can pre-qualify in minutes, then you can confirm your details, and then right after that, if you're approved, you can enjoy your monthly savings. Now, if none of these options work, don't worry. That means one of a few different things. Number one, you need to continue working on your credit score as it may not be high enough. Number two, the car may not qualify, and if you're not able to get a personal loan based on your personal credit, it's still not the end of the world. Keep working on your credit and you can trade the car in once your score gets a little bit better. But again, you, you still want to make sure that you still try as many options as you can because many of these options are soft pulls. And then last but not least, you may have to end up putting some money down. For example, let's say, for example, you owe $12,000 on your auto loan. But but one of these options that you look for, personal loan, um, auto loan refinancing, they say, hey, listen, we'll give you $10,000. That means you have to pay $2,000 out of your pocket, okay, to go ahead and then do the refinance. I'm telling you, if the numbers make sense, go ahead and do it. But if the numbers obviously don't make sense, then you have to do one of a few things, improve your credit score or just simply trade the car in. If you like this video, you're most definitely going to love the next one. I'll Good see evening, you. everyone. Let's get right into it, guys. So real quick, if you guys are looking for any type of bad credit auto loans near you, no matter what state that you're in nationwide, California, New York, Florida, Georgia, doesn't matter where you guys are. Um, of course, uh, you can most definitely go ahead and find some uh, dealerships that will work with you. OK, all you got to do is scan this QR code right here. Uh, Instagram, you guys can comment the word car and Facebook and everybody else. <laughs> the link is inside the description. OK, matter of fact, I'll put that up here so you guys can actually see it um, as well. All right. So either way. Um, so let's go ahead and get right into it, guys. So what credit score do dealerships use to actually take a look at your credit scores, okay? What they look at is called your FICO score eight, okay? Your FICO score eight, okay? And with your FICO score eight, there's only two ways to see this. There's a few other ways that you technically could see it, but the two easiest ways to see it is to, one, obviously go to a dealership, they run your credit, and they'll let you know 
what that score is, okay, or scores. Now, dealerships don't have to use all three. Some dealerships use all three. Some dealerships use two. Some dealerships use one score. So it really just depends. Most dealerships use FICO, but some dealerships use Vantage, okay? So someone had mentioned that, uh, you know, in, um, someone mentioned that um, on Instagram is do they use FICO or Vantage? And some dealerships actually do use the Vantage scores, but not many, okay? Not many of them. Um, for those who don't know, on the back end, FICO is more expensive for a lot of these companies to run. Now, even though it's more expensive, they've been doing it for years, so they're kind of used to it. So Vantage Score is like, ah, we really don't trust that algorithm, but it's much cheaper on the back end for them. So some of them have transitioned and some have not. What's going on, Fatina? And so that's where you guys want to start is you want to go ahead and find what dealerships are going to be near you that not only are used to you guys having, right, not the best credit. OK, so if you guys want to know, OK, I forget to mention that was number one. Number two is if you go to um, go to myfico.com, that's M-Y-F-I-C-O dot com. OK, if you guys go to myfico.com and you see their advanced plan, their advanced plan is twenty nine ninety nine. You only need it for one month, really, um, if you're just checking your scores. But you can see all of your category scores. You can see your mortgage scores. So if you guys want to go into home ownership this year. You can see those mortgage scores. Um, if you guys want to, you know, oh, and this light is like super bright. Hold on one second. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> I forgot I bumped it and it's like the light is like killing me. All right. Either way. So that's essentially where you guys are going to be at. Okay. Is you want to start and see, okay, what deal, what type of car do I want? And how do I know what type of scores they're going to be looking for? And that's going to determine. Now, of course, interest rates are not necessarily as low as they were, but they are coming down. You still want to get the best interest rate available. Now, let's say, for example, you got to go get a car. If you got to go get a car, but your credit score is not the best, ask yourself, what, do I have to get it today? Can I wait 30 days? Because some of you guys are going to the dealership. They're seeing 500 credit scores. They're seeing 400 credit scores because your $300 credit card is maxed out. Your $500 credit card is maxed out. Your $1,000 credit card is maxed out. If you paid that credit card off or paid half of that credit card, your score will improve. If your score improves, you will get a better interest rate. You will get better terms. You will have more car options, right? So another way to think about this is to say, okay, let me go ahead and go another route. Let me go ahead and get the car now and I can refinance later. OK, so I want you guys to put that in the comments, refinance so you can buy the car now and you can refinance later. OK, we talked about that. So you guys can go back to another video on how to lower your car payment. I got plenty of videos on how do you guys can lower your car payment with either auto loan refinance, a personal loan uh, that you could pay off. So there's a lot of ways you guys can do it. OK, but that's what dealerships, that's what scores they're looking for. If you don't have the best credit, then see what you can pay off if you have enough time to wait to go to the dealership. If you don't have enough time to wait for the dealership, I mean, to wait for your score to go up, then go ahead and get the card now, and then you can always get a lower payment later, okay? Does anyone have any questions in regards to um, auto loans, okay? Auto loans, leases, okay? That's what the topic is for tonight. Uh, by the way, uh, what's going on, Travis? Travis is in the house. We'll go ahead and get that track going on there. Uh, Stacy's in the house as well. Fatina, we know, appreciate your support as always. Um, that's the thing, guys, is that <clears throat> you want to make sure if you go now, that's another thing too. Before you go to the dealership, I'm going to give you guys this link as well. It's okay to get a pre approval before you go to the dealership. Okay. What are some companies you can get a pre approval from? Okay. One, well, I'm not going to just put all of it. You could put uh, your bank is going to be one, right? What's another one that you can got that you guys can go to to get pre-approved before you go to the dealership? So you got your bank, you got your credit union, right? What are some other places you guys can go to to get pre-approved? You guys can also go to Capital One, Capital One Auto um, Auto Finance. Check this out. Did you guys know that they do a soft pool, right? They do a soft pool. So how it works is you go to CapitalOne.com. You do the soft pull, fill out the application, and they automatically send your file to a dealership that they work with, and you're pre-approved before you go. Okay, they'll send you a range of what you can buy. 
if you've been approved up to 40,000, 30,000, 20,000, they they may even give you the interest rate, but now I think they just give you at least the buying power, okay? But you guys can get pre-approved before you go. Why is that why, why does that help? Because you have an idea of what you can buy. Some of you guys may be thinking you can't get that car and you can. Some of you guys may be thinking you can't get the car and you can't. Okay? So keep that in mind as well. You guys can all, all uh, you can always put yourself in position uh, to do that, okay? Then now, what happens if you get the car and then now you're in double digit interest rates? How what do you need to do? We need to refinance. We can save money, okay? What are some places that we can go to refinance? I'm going to give you guys all of these. autopay.com. Okay? That's where you guys can start. You can start with autopay.com. Next, you guys can also uh, go with, uh, what is that? Clearlane.com. Okay. We just did a video on this, but just because this ties into it, right? Clearlane.com. Next, we also have, what's some other ones that we have out there, guys? We have LendingClub.com. Okay. LendingClub.com. We have that as an option. All right. We also have, let me see, Auto Pay, Clear Lane, uh, Lending Club. Up, oh, of course. How could I forget this? Upstart.com. Okay, Upstart.com. All right. What's a good interest rate? A good interest rate right now, especially if you're looking to get a car, uh, a good interest rate. They're barely getting down into the single digits, but some of the single digits is available. They're starting to creep into that. Typically, uh, especially for Illinois. For Illinois, one of the, our busy seasons is what you, is when the auto show comes. So I don't know for you guys, but February, March, that's usually when it gets busy for a lot of the seasons. I mean, for a lot of the industries, a lot of the, I'm sorry, a lot of the states that have, you know, in the auto industry in general is usually either when the auto show comes or around tax season in general. OK, that's strategic, by the way. It's auto show tax season. It's auto show tax season. That's strategic. <laughs> but either way, a good interest rate is preferably single digits. OK, so a good interest rate is preferably Single digits, okay? So a good interest rate is normally single digits, okay? All right. Now, if you can get single digits, sometimes you can't get single digits, right? Sometimes you end up getting double. Sometimes you're at 10%, 14%, 20%. But that's why we have the refinance, right? If we have the auto loan and then we put the auto loan on auto pay, that's another thing people don't do. Put the auto loan on auto pay. Okay. Auto loan on auto pay. Okay. I see too many of you guys being late on these auto loans. Okay. Too many of you guys being late and you have the money. It's too much to try to remember this stuff. Right. Don't forget. Don't forget the late rule. Some of you guys forget the credit report late rule. Don't worry, Ant uh, Antoine. I'm about to answer that question in one second. Um, don't forget the late rule. What's the late rule? Late is... 30 days late to be reported to the credit bureau, okay? So it's only late if it's 30 days late, guys. I'm not telling you guys this so you can always be 29 days late. <laughs> I'm not telling you that. I'm telling you guys this because some of you all are paying on the 31st day, the 35th day, right? The 37th day. But if you would have just paid last week, you'd have been good. Some of you guys are getting these late payments and it's, it's killing your score. It's killing it. All right. Next, Antoine says, uh, don't these refinance institutions require you to have a car for like six months or two years? Very good question. The answer is not at all. Not at all. So refinance companies are all about the bottom line. OK, so let me give you guys a, a, um, a good gist. So a good, a good example of this would be buying a car for, let's say, um, let's say you owe $20,000 on the car. But when you first bought the car, the car was like, you know, maybe 17, 18,000 plus taxes, fees, plates, all this stuff, right? You was at 17,000, 17,500, maybe 18,000, and then it was about 20,000 out the door. That's normal, that's standard, basic numbers, right? Around 19 or so. But let's just keep the numbers easy at 20,000. You've now had the car for six months, okay? Now, the thing is, is that the equity has not yet built into the car, not just because of American inflation. OK, some car, which, by the way, some cars did get some um, some equity because of that. But most cars usually don't start paying into the principal heavier until like year four, year five. If you're on a six year term. Right. If you're on a five year term, probably year year three, year four, somewhere in that range. OK, 
Also depends on what type of interest rate you guys have. The higher your interest rate, the longer it takes for majority of your payment to go towards the principal. The higher your interest rate, the longer it's going to take for the principal, for the amount of money that you pay every single month to go towards the principal. Okay? So you guys have to look at what they call an amortization chart. I think that's how I said it. <laughs> I think that's how you say it. But with that type of chart, it shows you, you put in the final amount financed, the interest rate, and the term, okay? And it'll give you a monthly payment as well, too. Sometimes it'll ask for a monthly payment as well. But it'll show you the curve. And the curve is, for the first year, a lot of your money, a lot of your monthly payment is going towards interest. We know that, right? So year two, year three, year four is not until you, that's that break even point. But when you guys start driving, uh, like for DoorDash, Uber Eats, and adding all these additional miles to your car, that is going to devalue the car. Now, if your car is already a beater, don't you worry about it. You got nothing to worry about. <laughs> but when you guys have something that's within, like a car that's within eight years old or younger, it is affecting your mileage. But that's a whole nother video. That's a whole nother video. Okay. So, but either way, again, that's the options that you guys have. Again, guys, for those who are just joining us, um, bad credit auto loans. If you guys are looking to get a bad credit auto loan near you, you can go ahead and scan this QR code right here at the top, or you can go and actually look inside of the description. If you don't see it there, you will see it there later. Um, I can't move some stuff around, but either way. So, but that's essentially what you guys are looking at. All right. So now let's go ahead and swing back into it. Anyone got any additional questions? All right. But yes, to answer Antoine's question, Again, you can refinance at any time as long as the numbers make sense to the refinance company, okay? But it's not, it's really not, it's not a, a minimum amount of time per se. It's more so that's usually the sweet spot. 12, uh, 12 months is really like you must have single digits for the numbers to even work, typically, right? As far as the interest rates are concerned. But usually a good time to refinance is about 18, 24 months because that's when you start building into some equity. If your interest rate is closer to 20%, you may find yourself not able to get out that car until like three years. Don't forget, you guys can always trade in or you can always pay the difference. You guys can trade in or you can pay the difference. There are sometimes a refinance company will only finance a certain amount. For example, you may have, you may owe $12,000 on your car. You try to refinance, they say, hey, listen, we'll let you refinance, we'll give you $10,000. If they give you $10,000 and you have $12,000 left to pay, that means you have to pay the difference to the original finance company, which is $2,000. You're not stuck in these terms, guys. It's got to make sense. You're not stuck in these terms. It has to make sense. All right. What other questions you guys got? Let's keep going. What other questions we got? Auto loans. By the way, since I got you guys, don't forget, I'll put that inside. I think I actually, you know what? Let me pull that up. Easy homeowner. If you have a goal <laughs> to go into home ownership this year, all right, go ahead and scan that QR code. We do have a new YouTube channel called Easy Homeowner, okay? And um, I'm actually going in that, in that group, in that group, on that channel, there's a video dropping every day until next Friday. It's a video dropping every day until next Friday, okay? The video is already done. It's already scheduled. Enjoy, Okay. A lot of people got a lot of questions. We get so many, so many questions about home ownership. It's crazy how many questions we get, right? So um, I'm saying this to say all of your real estate questions um, can be answered at that channel, okay? So make sure you guys go ahead. If you, got, if you guys haven't already, we sent out an email on that as well, too. If you guys are not on our email list, I'm sure many of you guys are, uh, but we sent out an email on that the other day. Uh, easy home on a YouTube channel. Great information. Scan that QR code. And you guys get all your questions answered. Let's swing back into the questions, okay? Uh, what other questions we got? Stacy, you are very welcome. You are very welcome. All right? All right. So now, any other questions in regards to auto loans? I want to try to keep it one particular topic. Instagram, y'all good? Don't forget, comment the word car on Instagram if you guys want to get the link for bad credit auto loan dealerships near you, okay? All right, perfect. So what else What else can we talk about with cars? Um. I, I know I noticed that some of the one of the videos that people are starting to watch is an older video that's on YouTube. The, the video is um, how to remove yourself as a co-signer. So I just recently did this video again just because I saw people were kind of get having that question. Okay. But I tried to pretty much cover everything I could. Um let's you know what, let's talk about another piece because I, I just did that recently. 
Another piece we could talk about is how soon you guys can actually trade in the car. Okay. How soon can you guys trade in a car after you bought it? Oh, Travis has a question. All right. So here, let me answer this question that I just put out there. And then we're going to swing over to Travis's question. By the way, guys, put your questions inside the comments and we'll be wrapping up soon. But here's the thing. So you could trade in a car literally anytime you want to, but it goes back into equity. So if you buy a car that's 20000 right, now it has another owner. They really don't count owners. They really don't count owners, okay? But that plays a role. And you bought the car, let's say, let's say you buy a car in February 2024. Now, and then you say, you know what, I hate this car. Let me, how soon can I trade it in? Technically, you could trade in a car anytime you want to. The problem is the numbers won't work, okay? Or technically they will work, but you got to pay out of pocket or just take the voluntary repossession. A repossession is a repossession is a repossession. It doesn't matter if it's voluntary or involuntary, which means it doesn't matter if you give it to them and drop it off, and it doesn't matter if they got to come and get it. Now, if they got to come and get it, they may save you $400 because they have to pay a tow truck. But other than that, it does, it's going to be the same effect on your credit report, okay? So that does not matter. I want you guys to understand that. So when you're trading in a vehicle, if you bought that car at $20,000 and then six months go by and you say, hey, I don't want this car anymore, that car has a value of now what that mileage is and what that year is. You're going to usually look this up on like Kelly Blue Book. Kelly Blue Book doesn't necessarily buy cars. So it'll be close to what a dealership would offer because the dealership got to make money. Okay. They're, trust me, they're going to make money. Okay. So if that's the case, you do that, right? Now you can say, okay, um, it's, if I trade this car in, I can only get $14,000. That means to get out of that car, you need to come up with how much money, guys? Twenty thousand minus fourteen thousand, which is six thousand, and you can get out of that car. Or if you get a car with a two thousand dollar rebate, you can put that rebate towards that negative equity. You know how many people don't know, don't know that? If you guys find a car right now, there's going to be a few rebates, guys. The economy is trying to come out of what happened last year. There's going to be a lot of good stuff happening. Rates are coming down for real estate. Sellers are giving uh, seller closing cost credits, buyer closing cost credits, okay? And they're on the real estate side. And on the dealership side, a lot of rebates are going to be coming, guys. You can use the rebates towards negative equity. Rebates are instant down payments. I don't think you guys understand that. When you guys look at, when you guys see these car commercials and they say, hey, $1,500 rebate, $1,000 rebate, that is instant down payment money. Instant down payment money. Now, you don't, you don't have to use that $1,000 towards the down payment of the car. You can use that rebate towards the negative equity. So if you have a car that you paid $20,000 for, and let's just say you still owe about $20,000. Six months later, you want to trade the car in. They say they'll give you $14,000. But if that, so now instead of you paying $6,000 out of pocket, if you get a car with a $1,000 rebate, now you only have to pay $5,000 out of pocket. You know how many people don't know that? Exactly. All right. So you can trade it in anytime as long as you figure out the negative equity. Otherwise, you're doing a, um, a, a repossession, which there is a there is a bank. There is a bank right now that will give you an auto loan if you do a repossession like yesterday, last week. That's another video, man. I can't give you guys all can't give you guys all this stuff in one. All right. So now uh, next is Travis says, is it better to finance or lease? Is it better to finance or lease? Um. So it really depends on how much driving you're doing, um, to be honest. For example, typically, I, bu- like, uh, I recommend that you buy if you're going to be doing like a random amount of driving. If you do road trips, if you drive a decent amount, you know, I would say go with the buy. I'm a miles guy. So I typically get a car that's a little bit, that's got a few, a few, a few more miles on it, but nothing too crazy. Okay, nothing too crazy. Oh, my bad. I got this whole... <laughs> I got the easy homeowner up. Let me go ahead and move that out the way because, um, okay, cool. All right. So, but that's essentially what that's looking like. Okay. So you want to make sure that if you're buying a car that um, if you're going to be driving around a little bit, get something that's got miles on it. Okay. So the last time I bought a car was in 2017 and I bought a 2014 car and it has 16,000 miles on it. I'm going to give you guys those numbers again. In 2017, I financed a, a 2014 car. So it was three years old. It has 16,000 miles on it when I bought it. I'm a miles guy. Okay. I learned from selling cars. I'm either going to lease or I'm going to buy something used. But if you buy something new, I mean, there's nothing wrong with buying new and having a monthly payment. But it just again, if you're going to buy new and you always buy new, you may as well lease because it has a better resale value. And then you say, well, Calvin, well, if I lease, I don't own the car. You don't own the car on an auto loan. 
I want to make sure we're clear. You do not own the car with an auto loan. You own the car when the car is paid off. Many of you guys don't even pay off these cars anymore. Y'all had a car for three months, three years, four years, five years. And if it is paid off, you guys end up getting another car not too long after. There's nothing wrong with that. But if you guys are all, if you guys are always getting cars before it's paid off and it's around about three years, you may as well start leasing. You may leasing may be for you. Okay. Leasing might be your jam. I love, I listen, I love leasing. People go back and forth by leasing all the time. The reason why I like leasing is because one, um, again, now again, we buy and lease depending on the situation. So we have the car, we have the car that we lease, right? Which is, of course, it's like, hey, we want the new technology, we want the new feel, you want the tight seats, right? And then, but I want to be able to swap that out. Okay. I'm with me in cars, I have no intention on keeping a car. I don't have an intention on keeping a car for like forever. And I'm not knocking anyone that does. It's that do your thing. But what I know about cars is that if anytime you're not paying a monthly payment on a car, even if you just do like cash at it and paid it off, it's going to need maintenance. It's going to need maintenance, especially when you start getting up in miles. The oil changes are more. The tires got to be replaced. The car needs brakes, rotors, <laughs> under the hood stuff, right? We went to my engine and alternator. We're to my basic maintenance. So when, you, when I lease, I'm, we're usually out the car before it needs tires. You know what I'm saying? So we're done, but we're done with a car usually around about 35,000 miles. And we're done. Here's the keys. Let's, gra- let's grab something else, right? But again, that's my philosophy. Now, don't get me wrong. You could pay off your car, right? This isn't, I'm not necessarily giving financial advice. You do what's best for you and your budget. OK, that's because you lease or don't lease don't mean that, you know, you're spending more or spending less. It just really depends on how you guys do a car, because here's, here's the problem that some people are doing. Some people will have a car and they keep getting new cars every three, four years. You have negative equity and you keep taking that equity, that negative equity and adding it to the next loan every time you jump in and out of these cars. So that's why your payment is constantly going up. OK, so you can't if you don't want to keep doing that, you may want to consider leasing. You will be surprised if you some of you guys are in. Did you know that some states like Illinois, Illinois does this. It is cheaper to lease a car in the suburbs than it is to, to lease a car in the city. If Illinois does that, a lot of other states do that, too. It's just the way the math works out. You no know, cities, a lot, a lot more going on, a lot more hustle and bustle. But if you're in the suburbs, like, hey, it's more chill. Right. Ain't much traffic. Ain't many that ain't that many people out there. So that's why that is. I'm saying that to say compare the numbers next time. Compare the numbers next time. All right. Trisha says, are there certain cars? All right, guys, we're about to wrap up, by the way, about to wrap up real quick. By the way, again, for those who are just joining us, if you guys are looking for bad credit auto loans, go ahead and scan QR code right here uh, on the side. The number one reason why you want to avoid buy here, pay here is simply because most buy here, pay here um, dealerships do not report payments to the credit bureaus. Okay, so let's say, for example, uh, your credit is not the best and um, you go tried the traditional route and you didn't get the answer that you wanted to, which, by the way, the dealership that you go to plays a role, too. I've seen people, they say, well, I want a Mercedes. They'll go to Mercedes-Benz dealership. They get denied. They say, you know what? I'm all done. I'll just go to a buy here, pay here dealership. When there's a lot of dealerships that specialize in what I call sub, well, what they call subprime lending. And subprime is also just a nice word for people that don't have the best credit. But you you can't just rationalize that. You I say go to a few dealerships, um, you know, different areas. Um, you know, but you, we all know the areas where, uh, the, uh, the score may not necessarily be the highest. And that's usually on a strip where there may be a lot more, a, a lot of dealerships to choose. This is Calvin Russell, CEO and founder of 850 Club Credit Consultation. Hope everyone's doing well today. Today, we're going to talk about how to finance two vehicles in the same day or within a 10 to 15 day time frame. Let's go straight into it. All right. This question actually came. Uh, during a consultation I was having, uh, you know, with one of my clients, and uh, he had a great question. He says, "Listen, uh, I'm looking to, you know, purchase, uh, you know, two vehicles uh, in the same day, and uh, or within the same time frame." And he was like, "Can I even do something like that?" I said, "You actually can." And he was like, "Man, that's not like illegal or something like that." And I want to clear a lot of that up because it's a question that I think a lot of people get, 
um, that, that they want to ask someone, but they don't know necessarily the answer to. So the answer is, uh, is it illegal? The answer is no. Okay. Um, when you're buying a home, that um, they have a, a form for you to fill out, and it pretty much says. Is there any, are there any other debts that we don't know about that we calculate into your debt to income uh, that you need to tell us about that we don't have access to see? You're probably like, well, how can they not see that? Well, a person can easily have a side business um, where they have the money go to a different checking account, but they gave the mortgage lender access to one particular checking account, those bank statements, that W-2, those check stubs, all that stuff. And they just say, hey, listen, this is something we need to know. On the flip side, it could be money going out. It could be like a uh, like a, a, a major payment plan that you have, again, uh, in a, set up with another account. Either way, long story short, the, um, when you're buying a house, they, there's a form you have to fill out. And it pretty much says, hey, is there anything we don't know about? And you have to say either yes and explain or no and then just move on and, of course, turn it over to your lender. Now, that's when buying a home. The reason why they need that, obviously, because they factor into your debt to income. When you're buying a car, they do look at your debt to income, but not all of your debts, really. They also look at the credit score. Most everything is going to go by credit score first. Second is going to be income, and then third is going to be what's actually on the report. So remember that. Score, income, and then what's actually on the report. So, for example, when you're buying something, anything, when you're financing anything, a credit card, whatever, um, it more than likely won't show up in your credit report until about 25 to 45 days later, okay? And the reason why I say 25, I've seen people get lines of credit and it show up fairly quickly. So you can't always bank on the 30-day rule. So long story short, he said, hey, can I do it? I said, yes, but you have a short window. It has to be within 10 to 15 days. And some banks are affiliated with each other. Let's break that down. Um, back in 2015, um, we used to send uh, deals to Chase Bank. If Chase Bank could not get that deal done, uh, or was it Fifth Third? I can't remember which bank it was, but if they couldn't get the deal done, they would automatically send that application over to Santander. Now, I don't know if they still do that today, but again, that kind of gives you like an idea that they already have that on file, okay? So if you go to another dealership and you don't say that you, let's say for example, uh, you did that, you bought a vehicle, let's say you end up financing with you know, whatever company, and you go to another dealership, you don't tell them that you just financed a vehicle, and now they're sending your application to the same banks. They're like, wait a minute, they, didn't he just you know, finance this vehicle? Now, of course, only one bank would know that you actually financed the vehicle uh, because obviously they, they, they gave you the money, right? You know, But again, a lot of times, that bank doesn't even know until one to two days later. That's called funding, okay? So let's say you buy a car, you find, let's say you go to the dealership, you buy a car on Monday, and then of course they give you the keys, you drive off. Technically, that deal has not got funded, has not been funded yet until about one to two days. Now, funding usually takes place when, of course, the dealership takes that paperwork and they send everything in. All right. When they send everything in, they're not just going to just take a look at it, just give it a check mark. It takes about a day or so. OK, some deals take longer. So if the worse your credit is, the longer it takes a deal to fund. Then when I say longer, we're talking like three or four days. OK, the good news is it's not on your credit report. That's what makes it not illegal because they're not. No one's asking. No bank is calling you saying, hey, did you buy another car? Because people don't usually do stuff like this. But again, it helps because in this particular client situation, his income is strong enough. Um, you know, to where he's like, hey, listen, I know I've been paying this stuff all the time anyway. So, it, so can you afford it in real life? Yes. But banks normally like incomes that's over 60, over 70, over 80,000 before they start considering two car loans at the same time. And those car loans can't be two $50,000 car loans. And it may, they'll probably do like a 20 and a 10, a 20 and a 20, you know, maybe a 20 and a 30 max, you know, but that's if you're doing like 70, $80,000 of gross income. So you can do it but it has to be within a 10 to 15 day window. It's easier if you do the same dealership. Why? Because that dealership, they know the game. I mean, they, they know that you can easily, you know, you know, get around just not sitting, because the same bank is not going to finance two, two same vehicles. The flag is going to come up. It's going to say, hey, and not a bad flag. It's not like that you can't do it. It's just that banks don't like it. That's all it is. For example, you can't stop a person from buying a car, then co-signing for their sister the, the following day or the same day. Technically, the responsibility is still the same because if the sister decides to not pay that auto loan, he, that person is now technically responsible. So again, they're not necessarily going to pressure you about it, but you most definitely could do it. It's easy if you go to the same dealership or if you go to another dealership, another brand, it's okay to let them know, hey, listen, just at least let the sales, let the sales person know, but some sales people don't know that, don't know that much anyway. Let the sales manager know, say, hey, listen, I just bought a car today or yesterday and I'm financed with this bank. I just want to give you a heads up. 
And when they do that, they say, okay, great. And what they're going to do is they're not going to send your application to that particular bank, especially when they have banks that are affiliated. For example, uh, you may not know this, but Ally is affiliated with GM Financial. GM Financial is affiliated with AmeriCredit. So you got so that goes three three levels deep. GM Financial is usually the more top tier, and then AmeriCredit is usually like a slightly bottom tier. And then of course you have Ally, which is about the same as GM Financial, but of course Ally finances other vehicles outside of GM. So, but again, they're all connected. So all that plays a major role when you're looking to get financing and things of that sort, uh, simply because, you know, again, they may work hand in hand together. So it's best that you let the sales manager know as well as the salesperson, okay? So it can be done. We'll make sure you guys do that. So if you like this video, like it, you want to share it, share it. And as always, be sure to subscribe as we have nothing but great content on the way. Thank you all so much. Have a great day. Calvin Russell, CEO and founder of 850 Club Credit Consultation. Hope everyone's doing well today. Today, we're going to talk about the three things you need to do before going to any dealership nationwide, okay? And of course, a lot of people buy and lease a lot of cars every single day. And you're probably like, well, you know what? Um, I've been buying cars in the past. I know the game and things of that sort. If you haven't bought that many cars, if you've never really financed a car before or leased a car for that matter, there are a couple things you need to know right away. Let's jump straight into it. So number one, you need to know your credit score, okay? And not just your credit score, but you also need to find out what credit score the dealership is going to run before you get there, okay? So of course, the easiest way to do this is to go to MyFICO, that's M-Y-F-I-C-O.com, all right? And what's best for you to do is just go ahead and purchase the three bureau monitoring. Um, and uh, also known as, I think it's the three bureau um, essentials, I believe they call it now. And it costs $30. It's actually $30 a month. Whether you decide to keep the package monthly, that's up to you. Uh, but it's going to give you all of your scores. I believe 28 scores all together. Okay. Of those 28 scores, three of them are going to be your Equifax, TransUnion, and Experian uh, Auto Score 8. Okay. Majority of uh, dealerships are going to go by the Auto Score version 8. Uh, but you can most definitely call, this is where that phone call to the dealership comes in. And you can either ask a manager, don't ask a salesperson. Try your best not to ask a salesperson. A lot of sales guys bounce around from different dealership to dealership. That's not a bad thing, but a lot of times they may not know or remember what, you know, this, uh, what score specifically or what bureau, um, you know, the dealership actually runs. Um, you know, at my dealership, we use TransUnion, but at a dealership, down the street from my dealership in the same state, they ran um, Equifax. So it's just little things that you need to know because for example, I've seen it where people have had previous auto loans with certain banks or whatever, right? And um, that particular auto loan that they had in the past only reported to Equifax. So as, as, as a, just I'm just using this as an, a real life example. So if you have, let's say three years of on-time payment history, only on Equifax and not on TransUnion Experian, then what type of dealership would you like to go to? Or which type of dealership, you know, um, you wanna make sure that the place that you're going to is going to be the type of dealership that that's gonna pull the, the Equifax credit report. I hope this is making sense and I'm not all over the place, but, uh, but that's number one. You wanna make sure that you know what your score is and what they're gonna run. Nine times out of 10 is gonna be your auto score, but you have to find out which bureau they're going to pull. It's not like with a mortgage where they look at all three credit bureaus, okay? Most of the time, they're only gonna use one. Your job is to find out which one that dealership is going to use and what score that is, okay? Number two. Have an idea of what type of car you're going to go with before you get to the dealership, please, okay? Especially if you're considering a uh, pre-driven, all right? The reason why I bring this up is because that's going to play a major role into, um, you know, what the numbers are going to come out to a little bit later. Um, for example, we when I worked at Nissan, people would pop up at the dealership saying, hey, you guys got any Dodge Chargers? Um, we need to check online, like cars.com. If you're looking for a specific vehicle, please go to some, somewhere like cars.com or wherever you want to go. But cars.com, of course, has always been simple to me. You just put in there, like me personally, I was looking for a specific, you know, uh, make and a model, you know, for the car that I'm driving now. So, and then I just, once I put that in, then it gave me a list of everybody that had it. Now, since I've been in the industry for a long time, um, I knew that I wanted to go within like the last five years, four or five years, 
because most of the time those are what you call certified vehicles. Certified is going to be, of course, it's going to come with a warranty and also a lot of times they come, sometimes they come with a rebate and then sometimes they come with, you know, some type of, um, you know, special type of warranty and other terms and things of that sort. Okay. So like it extends that powertrain warranty. Sometimes you get special interest rates and things of that sort. And that's what ended up happening for me. Um, I, I was looking for a certain make, certain model, and I actually got the, the uh, I bought the auto, I bought the vehicle from the actual auto maker, okay? So for example, if you're buying a Honda, go to, if you're looking for a Honda, you'll probably get a, a, the best situation if you go to a Honda. You know, Honda certified technicians, they looked at that vehicle nine times out of 10, the parts on the vehicle are gonna be Honda parts. Just little things like that play a major role because, um, you know, when you're trying to, of course, when you drive the car, you wanna make sure, you know, that you're, that it's, it's a, a real deal certified car, right? So that plays a major role into what you're gonna be looking at later down the line because you don't wanna have any issues. Then you're gonna find out what type of terms that type of vehicle qualifies for, if it is pre-driven, whatever the case may be. Now, of course, this goes into play when you're looking to go into a new car. When you're looking for a new car, it helps to kind of get an idea of what type of trim you're gonna be looking to go into. Um, you know, what type of, you know, what your, what your monthly payment and monthly budget is gonna be, which leads into number three. What type of numbers are you going to be looking for? Okay, you need to have a certain amount that you're going to be able to look at. I, there's a video I did uh, not too long ago, and it was, it was I think I called it uh, "How to Calculate an Auto Loan Payment." Okay, you guys got to look that video up. And um, in that video, I show you guys the app. Um, well, actually, not the app. I show you guys the process of looking up a monthly car payment. All you got to do is just Google auto loan calculator and then Google itself turns into a calculator and you just put the numbers in and let's say for example you say well you know what I want to be I, I want my payments not to be anything higher than, two, than $400 a month but then when you make that phone call to the dealership and you find out what type of stuff that they're running right and uh, let's say if it's like a TransUnion auto score and your TransUnion auto score is let's say a 550, right? So you already know if you want to be at 400, now you can kind of say, hey, listen, if, if I'm a four, if, if I want to be at 400 a month, my credit score is 550, I want to go with this type of car, do you have any idea what type of interest rate, you know, um, I'm going to be at? And they'll give you like a ballpark, right? They can't give you like an exact estimate until they actually run your credit, you know? So, but again, as you start to learn the process, you know, again, I, me personally, I had them run my credit before I even came in there. Why? Because that way the numbers stayed a certain way before I got there. All right. So for those who don't know, I do offer a dealership professional uh, package is you no, know, it's fairly inexpensive, and I've saved a lot of my clients thousands upon thousands of dollars. Um, you know, for that. And how it works is, I do the negotiations for you. I set the expectations for you, and I help get everything in in order. That way, before you even go to the dealership, I have everything laid out for you. Okay, and then I'm also available while you're at the dealership as well too. Just kind of like that big brother, that dad type of deal. Uh, because again, I've spent six years in the industry. Uh, for those who know the story, I don't want to bore you guys with that story. Uh, but again, I spent six years uh, working at Nissan. Four of those years, I was in sales. I sold over 550 cars in less than four years. And I spent those last two years in management. I was an internet sales manager. So I saw 50 to 60 credit reports a day. It was insane, okay? I saw all those credit reports every single day. It was just crazy. But either way, those are the three things you want to make sure you take care of before you go to any dealership, okay? So thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you like it, like it. If you want to share it, share it. And as always, we've got great content on the way. Be sure to subscribe as well too. Thank you guys so much. Have a great day. It's Calvin Russell here, CEO and founder of 850 Club Credit Consultation. Hope everyone is doing well today. Listen, I most definitely want to go into uh, one of the top questions I've always gotten uh, when people are looking for a vehicle. And that's, do you need um, a down payment? Okay. Now, everyone's situation is going to be a little bit different uh, again. But the thing about it is, is that when you're looking to go into a dealership, you want to make sure that uh, you have a few things in place, especially if you're looking to see if you need a down payment, okay? So the number one way that, well, I would say the number one reason that you should know you need a down payment is if you have a credit score um, that's usually under, I would say about 620, okay? That doesn't mean that you can that you cannot get approved um, without a down payment. It's just that the chances are a little bit higher. I would say 80 to 85% chance if your score is under 620, under 600, that you will need a down payment. 
Um, mainly because uh, the banks need some type of skin in the game uh, so they know that you're going to actually, you know, pay the bills on time and things of that sort. Uh, again, everyone's situation is going to be a little bit different. For example, if you are 590 or 600 or 620 and in the last three years you paid your car note on time, you've never been late, you've never missed a payment, then again, you may not need a, um, a down payment. But at the same time, if you're under 620, no, under no, 600, 590, somewhere in that range, um, uh, it all depends on what made you get your score that low, okay? If you've had late payments, if you've missed a payment, um, if you had previous repossessions, you know for a fact you're probably going to need a down payment, okay? So that's number one because of your credit score. Number two, the number two way that I've seen, the, uh, I would say the second reason as to why I've seen a lot of people need a down payment is mainly because uh, they're trying to uh, they're trying to trade in a vehicle, but they don't have enough equity to carry over. For example, if your credit score is, let's say, I don't know, let's say a 650, okay? It could be a 700 as well, too. In this case, the credit score does play a role, but not so much, not as big of a role as it would just without having a trade-in. The trade-in is going to be the biggest factor. For example, if your um, trade-in is worth 10000 and you owe 15, so again, if it's worth 10, but you owe 15000 then you're going to have negative equity of $5,000. Now, if you're going to a brand new vehicle, you can carry that negative equity over, but not all of it, okay? Every lender is going to have a different structure depending on where your score is and how much negative equity you can carry over. But on average, I've seen if you're like a 720, you probably can get away with carrying over 5,000. Now, here's a couple things you got to remember. For every thousand you carry over, on average in the United States, it's going to average to anywhere between about $15 to $20 a month. Let's just say worst case scenario, $20 a month. So if you're carrying over 5,000, 1,000 equals 20, 20 times 5, you, that means you're going to be looking at a $100 a month payment higher because you're carrying over that negative equity. Now, when you go into a new vehicle, oh, now watch where I'm going, when you go into a new vehicle, some new vehicles, not all, some new vehicles have rebates, okay? And those rebates can be applied towards your negative equity. For example, if a car has $1,500 uh, rebate and, you, and your negative equity is 5,000, now you're carrying over 3,500. So that would be 1,000, 1,000, 1,000, and then, of course, 500. So we're looking at 20, 20, 20, 10. So we're looking at only carrying over about $70 a month um, in addition to what your normal monthly payment would be on that car had you not had the trade-in. Hope I'm not losing any of you. So um, either way, what can also bring that number down is if, of course, you bring some money to the table, okay? Depending on your credit score, like, say, for example, that's a 720 type of situation. So in that same scenario, if you get that rebate and you have $5,000 worth of negative equity, now we have $3,500 that we're carrying over. If your score is not at that point, or let's say it's like a 600 or a 620, nine times out of 10, they're not going to let you carry over that negative equity. Again, every lender's different, every manufacturer's different, but it's just safe to understand the worst case scenario. So in that type of situation, they may let you carry over fifteen hundred, maybe two grand. So you may have to come to the table with about fifteen hundred to a thousand dollars down. Okay, so that's the number two reason as to why people need um, money down is because they have negative equity. The third reason why you need money down is simply because you want to. Uh, um, you're trying to get a certain type of monthly payment, okay? It's nothing wrong with that. Uh, sometimes we come from a car where we were paying two fifty a month. Now we want a newer car, a bigger car. Now it's going to put us at 400 a month. So for every 1000 you put down, it's going to put you at about $20 less. You got it. So that means that if the car is already at 400 a month, you want to be at 250 If you put $5,000 down, then your payment is only going to be around $300 a month, okay? That's on average in the United States. Every lender is different. Every manufacturer is different, but that's on average from what I've seen, okay? So that's why some people feel like, well, money down doesn't do a lot to it. Well, that's because you're looking at thousands of dollars divided into, depending on what state you're in, but most people usually do five to six-year month terms. I'm sorry, five to six-year uh, terms. So five years would be 60 months. Uh, six years would be uh, 72 months, okay? And then if you're in like Arizona, I believe uh, also, um, I think in Virginia as well too, there's a lot of other places. In Illinois, we do it too, 84 months, but there's a minimum amount of finance. Your score got to be at a certain point. There's a lot of ramifications. Some of you guys are like, there's no way I'm going seven years on a car. You'd be surprised. When you're looking at a 60, 70, $80,000 truck, 
that pavement becomes very attractive, okay? So, uh, but, or a car, it could, doesn't necessarily have to be a truck, but either way, so those are the three reasons. Number one is because your credit score, you know, it could be so low or you have certain types of history where you're gonna need that down payment, okay? Number two is if you have negative equity, and of course, um, you know, you may necessarily, you may have to do, do it that way. And then of course, number three, if you're trying to accomplish, you know, another, a certain type of payment range, okay? Then of course, you got number four, where the bank just simply says, hey, listen, based on your situation, you most definitely have to do, um, you know, um, uh, no down payment. Because it necessarily, it, sometimes people have like a previous bankruptcy or they're in a bankruptcy. Um, some people don't know that. I have two videos on that, how to buy a car in a Chapter 7 or a Chapter 13. Currently, like you're in the bankruptcy, how to uh, buy a vehicle doing that. Also, how to buy a vehicle after a Chapter 13 or Chapter 7. Uh, but, of course, when you're doing that, anytime you bring up bankruptcy, there's about a 95% chance you will need a down payment. Now, how much of a down payment will you guys need? Again, that's going to be up to you, okay? Okay. Usually the higher the interest rate, the lower the impact per month that down payment is going to have. Again, the higher the interest rate, the lower the impact per month that down payment is going to have. Okay, So if you're looking at a 23% interest rate, $1,000 is not going to do you know, uh, 15 to $20. We're talking maybe 11 to $14, somewhere in that range. So you can always kind of play with the numbers. I'm going to do... Um, um, I'm going to do a video on how to calculate an auto loan payment uh, pretty soon. I'll probably do it tomorrow morning if, you, if I feel like it. So, uh, But thank you guys so much. As always, if you like this video, like it. If you want to share it, share it. And of course, if you're looking for uh, you know great content coming up, just like I always do, be sure to subscribe as well too. Thank you so much. Talk to you guys soon. Out of 850 Club Credit Consultation, Calvin Russell here. Hope everyone is doing well today. Today we're going to talk about the pros and cons of buying a demo on the showroom floor or just a demo in general general at the dealership okay so let's go straight into it so of course the pros are gonna be uh, the fact that well uh, you're gonna get a good deal on the uh, on the demos that's normally what it is and the reason being is because it got a few miles on them is on the showroom floor and it creates the excitement you know when per when a person buys a car uh, or a truck of course uh, off the showroom floor it creates the excitement they get you know the porters come in they start the car up you know they open up the doors people get a chance to see the vehicle go out and they probably swap another vehicle and bring another vehicle in so people like to see what the process is and because they never pay attention to how the doors open up and you know because you go into a dealership it's like how do they get the cars in there everyone always asks how do you get the cars in there and I remember working at the dealership you know you, uh, I used to be on the side by the door and I would then um, you know open up the door and like open up the hatchet the latches for the door so people can see because it was like oh my god how do you guys get these vehicles in here but either way that it creates that excitement and so that's one of the pros of course is that again you'll be able to get that discount you know so you'll be able to kind of see how that goes now now also one of the cons all right so now one of the cons is going to be you don't know how they drove the vehicle uh, my wife used to work for uh, enterprise and of course with me working at uh, the dealership I can tell you and she can tell you too I'm sure uh, and rental and, and, you, and you can always access type of stuff at the dealership or you know at a rental car place my point is is that when the car is not yours you're going to drive it a little bit differently like it's not your friends your family members or something like that this is a car that's you know you brand new of course and as a demo I had a demo at the dealership and when you get on the expressway you're flooring it to get on the expressway so you drive a little bit different the braking is different you know you're turning different but again everyone's a different driver so uh, not that I didn't care but again it's just like little things that you would not do if it's not your vehicle but for the most part of course the vehicle's been you know well taken care of but there were some people I knew that, that like you know I, how they drove their vehicles it's like they if it was their car they would stop a little bit better they would turn a little bit easier just little things like that play a role when you're talking about buying a demo okay um, of course Another pro is is that um, if you have it, um, of course, since it's brand new, you'll be able to get the incentive. So that's what's pretty cool. Just because it has a few miles on it, those miles will not go against, let's say, if you go into a lease. Uh, those miles do not affect if you go into a warranty. It goes by you know how that is. So a lot of people think that when you're buying a demo, a demo off the showroom floor, just a demo in general, um, you know, that you're buying a used car. Essentially, you're not. The vehicle's never been titled before, so the insurance company is going to look at it as a brand new vehicle. 
vehicle. Um, and then, you know, the interest rates for the bank that you're going to go with, they're going to look at it as a brand new vehicle as well, too. And so all that plays a role. So you still get those new car perks. If you get roadside assistance, if you get a special interest rate, rebates, um, you know, your insurance company may give you a discount. None of that changes. None of that changes. OK, but again, now another pro is kind of going back until you don't know how someone drove it. You know, you're going to see a, a couple more scratches, a couple more dings uh, if they didn't you know take care of it. You know, so again, it's not going to have that exact same feel um, as no one uh, as of just a few miles just from test drives or coming straight off the truck versus having 5,000 miles, 3,000 miles. And you can feel the difference sometimes uh, just because, again, it has those few miles on it. You don't know how they drove it and you don't know the condition of the vehicle you know, at the beginning of the time. OK, but again, those are just the pros and cons of it. For the most part, you got to decide, you know, if that's something that you want to do. You know, you don't know necessarily how they drove it. But again, it's still a brand new car. It's never been titled. The dealership still owns it. And it's just, uh, again, it's just another way for you to get a discount uh, on um, a vehicle, especially without the showroom floor. They're creating that excitement, you know, and it gets everybody back involved, especially if there's customers there. If it's like a Saturday, it's packed at the dealership and there's customers watching. All that plays a major role when you're buying a vehicle, especially a, a demo. So, again, it's going to still qualify for all the incentives and everything because it's brand new has never been titled so either way if you like this video like it um, if you want to share it share it and as always we got great videos uh, on the channel and more on the way so be sure to subscribe thank you so much see you guys soon I'm Russell CEO and founder of 850 Club Credit Consultation hope everyone is doing well today today we're going to talk about the best time to purchase or lease a vehicle as we know is among us it is the end of the year all right so after selling cars for six years um, in of those six years, I was uh, in sales for four of those years. In those four years, I sold over 550 cars um, in less than four of those years. And during that time frame, the best time, it seems to be with the incentives and things of that sort, it seems to be, excuse me, the end of the year. Okay. The reason being is because it's the end of the model year. Um, most new vehicles, I'm assuming that you're looking to go into um, you know, getting um, a, either a new vehicle. Um, it's nothing wrong with getting, you know, a pre-owned or used vehicle, but honestly, pre-owned or used, you can pretty much get those anywhere. But if you planned on getting something that's certified, which means that you're buying uh, the manufacturer, the, the actual make from the automaker. For example, if you're buying a Toyota from a Toyota dealership, they sell new and used Toyotas. Um, if you're buying a, you know, a Nissan and they sell new Nissans as well. If you're buying a Mercedes and they also sell new Mercedes Benzes. So it's nothing wrong with buying a used vehicle because you can buy a used vehicle anywhere. But you want to try to go certified. So if you're buying a certified pre-owned uh, from the automaker, um, if you're leasing, ve leasing a vehicle or if you're buying a brand new vehicle, this is the best time to buy. The incentives are usually better. Um, of course, the dealership, they always got uh, monthly numbers to try to reach. Uh, but towards the end of the year, um, that uh, the dealerships, here's what, so here's, this is what a lot of people don't know about that, is that they have to, in order to qualify for the newer vehicle inventory, they actually have to sell the older inventory. And the dealerships that do not sell um, the older inventory fast enough, uh, they can't swap out with the newer models. For example, it's 2019. Um, yes, they have 2020 models already prepared and they're there all ready to go, right? Uh, but they're going to put a limit on them. Uh, so that's number one, is that it limits their inventory once they keep vehicles in there. You know, that's 2020, not, well, that's 2019. Uh, and some dealerships maybe have some as 2018, but they usually turn those into rentals by now. Uh, they turn them into a rental car department. Uh, they turn them into loaners. Um, and then once they get miles up on those, then they turn them into certified pre-owned vehicles. So uh, there's always ways around uh, to get a, to get it. But of course, uh, the manufacturer can still see that that VIN number is still um, owned by the dealership, even if the dealership does purchase it. So they have to buy it from themselves, and they don't want to buy it at you know at sticker price. Okay. So just little things like that you want to just kind of keep out. That's number one. The number one reason why they get rid of so much of their inventory so quickly is because they can't. They're limited on the new models that are just coming out, the 2020s, um, you know, uh, they're going to be limited on it because they have to get rid of the 2019. So that's number one. Uh, number two, insurance purposes. So um, the all the dealerships have some type of insurance plan um, on there, what they call their fleet or their table, or uh, there's a lot of different jargon uh, that dealerships use. But in short, the insurance costs more 
on newer vehicles that are not yet sold versus a used car. A used car is used, they know it's used, it is in there, it's used. That means it's had a previous owner, okay? And there's nothing wrong with that at all. Even if it's certified, it's gonna be like that. But when you have a new vehicle and it has an older model year, but it still has not yet been sold, then the insurance is higher on that vehicle uh, simply because you still need brand new parts on a vehicle because it's still considered to be brand new because it has not yet been titled uh, to an owner, okay? So those are the top two reasons why dealerships need to get rid of the inventory by the end of the year. Granted, they, they sell vehicles every single day. Saturdays is always a good day as well too, but at the end of the year, that's always the best time. Now, if it's a big deal to you to get a 2020, then you can go ahead and do that. It's not gonna be many incentives on 2020 year vehicles, but there's most definitely gonna be some incentives on vehicles that are still 2019 as they don't wanna go into next week with that vehicle in their inventory. So hope this video helped. If you like it, like it, you wanna share it, share it, and as always, be sure to subscribe as we have nothing but great content on the way. Thank you all so much. Have a great day. I'm Russell, CEO and founder of 850 Club Credit Consultation. Hope everyone's doing well today. Today we're gonna to talk about the four reasons why you should really reconsider uh, financing an auto loan or getting an auto loan from a credit union. All right, let's go straight into it. So for those who don't know, credit unions are another alternative to using banks. Uh, credit unions are really big on relationship building and things of that sort. We have some really big credit unions, uh, like here in Illinois, we have Credit Union One. I don't know how big that is, or that's just a Midwest thing, uh, but they're pretty big where we are. Then, of course, you have on a national level, uh, you have, of course, uh, Penn Fed. Uh, you also have, um, of course, Navy Federal. Uh, so you have a lot of those big, you know, conglomerate places. So this stuff may not apply to the bigger ones, but if you got somewhere local, like hometown type of deal, um, you know, and there are some smaller credit unions in big cities, but it, these are some things that you really must reconsider if you're going to do business with them, okay? So number one is that um, they still have an old school system, meaning they run your credit first and then they let you know what you've been approved on, okay? What your interest rate's gonna be, how much they're gonna give you, things of that sort. The reason why I think you should uh, you know, really uh, spend time on this one is because when you go to a dealership, you have a lot more options. Granted, they can shotgun your application, but you can also tell the dealership not to send your application to more than three or four banks or whatever your number is, right? When I bought my car, um, I said, hey, listen, uh, do not run my credit. Uh, it's, you know, I'm sorry, do not send my credit report uh, you know, to multiple banks. I, I just want to finance with you guys. And I already have spoke to the finance manager. That's another thing that you, gotta, that you guys got to start doing ask to speak with the finance manager. They're not doing anything. Like if you call them during the week, like early in the morning on a Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, those are really slow days, early in the morning. Um, you know, not a Monday or Friday or Saturday, obviously. Some states, uh, they're open on Sundays. Don't bother them on a Sunday. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, ask to speak to the finance manager. They're sitting there. I'm not saying that they're do doing absolutely nothing, but there's a good chance that they're not busy, okay? And you just ask them questions like, hey, you know, what's your interest rates? You know, how can I finance with, you know, with the bank directly and things of that sort? So those, those are some things that you want to just ask in, instead of just narrowing down or only having one particular option. People go to a credit union, Credit union says, hey, we can finance up to 20000 and we'll let you do it for 60 months. You say, okay, cool. You take your check. You go to a dealership. You go buy the car. Problem is, you could have got, you could have went 72 months and got a lower payment. And if you would have financed with the manufacturer, because I know you're probably thinking, well, longer term, same interest rate. So a lot of times there's, a, there's specials going on, 0% for 72 months versus paying 3.99 at 60 months. Now, don't get me wrong. Can you pay it off earlier? Absolutely. Just because you signed paperwork that says that you um, are going to pay at 72 months doesn't mean you can't pay it off early. So there's a lot of things that you can do when you have the flexibility of just not, of just, having more than one option, if that makes sense. Number two, um, a lot of small uh, credit unions don't report to all three bureaus. I've seen that time and time again, where one credit report is substantially higher than uh, one, well, I should say one credit bureau, or two credit bureaus may be substantially higher uh, than, no, than, the, than the one that is not being reported on because that auto loan, which by the way, we're talking a two, three, four, five, six year commitment, possibly is not showing up on your credit report. I've had people refinance their auto loan just because of that reason. Like, dude, if you're going to keep paying this amount and you can afford to pay it and you're not late or anything like that, I, should, I, I strongly recommend either refinancing that, um, you know, or you know, with another bank, <clears throat> you know, which is going to bring me to my next point. Uh, so refinance with another bank or consider trading it in. So not all credit unions report to all three bureaus. Uh, number three, most won't let you refinance, uh, just like any other bank, right? 
um, you know, you have a commitment with them, they, they can easily make more money off of you at the higher interest rate than to give you a lower interest rate based on, based on a higher credit score. Not every credit union is going to do it. As a matter of fact, most credit unions won't let you refinance with them. So I suggest, if you even if you really love your credit union, if they cannot beat the rates that are at the dealership, go with the dealership for now, wait a little bit, and then refinance with your credit union. So you have to leverage and finesse the system. I saw people do it all the time. People will come into Nissan, and then Nissan said, hey, in order to get this rebate, you got to uh, finance with Nissan. And then Nissan's rule was, and it's in the fine print, but nobody reads it. Nissan's rule back in the day, I don't know if they still have it now or any other manufacturer for that reason, you only have to finance for 30 days, and then you take that amount, and then they will refinance with their uh, credit union. Now, why would they do that? They will refinance with the credit union to get the better interest rate, but they, they uh, started financing with the manufacturer to get the rebate. Now you get the rebate and you get a good rate because you now have your credit union buy that. This is where credit is going to obviously come to play because you've got to qualify, all right? And then number four, not all credit unions finance all cars. Some credit unions, um, they, you know, they'll cut you off at a certain amount, like I mentioned earlier. One credit union may tell you that you're, you know, twenty thousand dollars is just all you can buy, but the car you really want is twenty five thousand, twenty six, thirty grand, whatever that number is, all right? But now we let's talk about used cars. With some used cars, and a lot of times banks won't go, a lot of credit unions won't go past four years. Or if you go past four years, now you can only finance for four years. So imagine you, you know you, that you finally see that, that really beautiful car is 2019, but they won't let you finance a 2014. You're probably like, man, I can finally afford this particular vehicle, but they won't go back that far. Or if they do, they give you a shorter term, which now equals a higher payment. And not every older vehicle that has that particular year doesn't necessarily mean it, it doesn't have you no know, high mileage. You know, so I bought uh, two years ago, I bought a 2014 with 16,000 miles in 2017 that I bought it. That was phenomenal mileage, okay? You know, but again, most banks probably wouldn't finance uh, going back, and it wasn't that far back, it was like only three years, but I've seen vehicles that's four, five, six years older have really good mileage, but a lot of banks won't finance it just because majority of the average of the years at the time that you buy the vehicle, um, you know, you could you still, you may not necessarily have mileage, but you still may have just regular deterioration, all right? And then, here's the deal. All in all, credit unions are not bad. It's just some things to think about because they don't have the capacity to, you know, to take a certain amount of risk. So they have to kind of leverage a lot of that, you know, that risk off by, you know, saying, hey, we won't take this car. We only give you this amount of money versus when you go to a dealership or something like that. Or even if you do a soft pool, um, you know, then, of course, you know, on other resources like Capital One, they have a soft pool platform. It lets you know how much you can buy where dealerships, you know, you can go get your pre-approval at. It lets you know things before you make a commitment versus making a commitment by having your credit ran and then thinking you should go with a certain bank because they ran your credit, all right? But you can call and just ask and say, hey, what's your rates? What's your, you know, uh, what's your rate sheet? Schedule some time to go in. Talk to a representative. Ask questions before you, they run your credit. You tell them what your credit is. You do know they have a book that they go by because they have to go by that book anyway when, once they run your credit or not. What do I mean by that? Let's say, for example, you walk into a credit union, they run your credit, and then they're going to eventually open up their book or go online and say, hey, what type of rate can we get this person? That the process is the same even if they don't run your credit. So I don't know if you know that. So you just say, hey, my, if you tell them, if you call them and speak to a, a finance person or a banker at the credit union and say, hey, my credit score is 700, what, what kind of rates can I get? They'll tell you without having to run your credit because you already know. That's how a seasoned car buyers or just seasoned people in general make decisions, all right? So either way, if you like this video, like it. If you want to share it, share it. And as always, be sure to subscribe as you have nothing but great content on the way. Hope you guys can hear this video because I just realized I got the fan going. So <laughs> talk to you guys soon on the next video.